Well, we have had a rough start to this new Premier League season. However, I think it's just a form blip and we're actually quite good. The reason I know this is because the Fulham game from the last episode, it didn't save properly after that. I had to replay it. It took six attempts to not win that game. I think we are better than current results suggest we are. Hello and welcome to part 141 of It's Coming Home. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you. Our first ever Europa League group play game away against Le Lech Poznan. Lech Poznan? Don't know how you say that. And then we're away against Tottenham in the Premier League. As I mentioned on the intro there, a terrible start to the season um, until we played Chelsea, which we'll get to in a minute. We've just beaten Chelsea 3-0. This Fulham game though, my word. It didn't. The last episode didn't save properly. The first match did, so the the Wolves result is still exists. I think we lost to Fulham two 0 on the last episode, but I t it took so many reload attempts to lose this game again. But lose it we did. I didn't want to just play a completely random team, and I didn't want to change too much. I think that simulated what happened in reality as closely as possible. We then lost to Liverpool, we lost to Bournemouth, we arranged a friendly against Ufa in the inter in the international break and clearly that was the medicine that we needed because we then went to Chelsea and won 3-0 in a dominant display, a Camo and Kano together looking absolutely fantastic and hopefully we carry that form onto Poznan and then just keep rolling in the Premier League. Um, I'm going to look at Tottenham now because people have been asking me how Tottenham had their fall from grace last year. What happened to Kevin Williamson? He is still there. He he did. I mean, he was there last year. For whatever reason, he only played 21 games rather than 38 and only scored 13 goals rather than 38 or 43. Um, I don't know if he had an injury. Should we have a little look? Did Kevin Williamson get an injury last year? Um, he had... A, yeah, he had a broken ankle. There you go. He broke his ankle in November and Tottenham went from being back-to-back -back Premier League champions to... what? Did, where did they finish last year? Ha! Huh. They finished ninth. That's the difference Kevin Williamson makes to that team. He's fit again now, though. So that's worrisome when we come to play them. But we're not worrying about them now. What we're worrying about is Lech Poznan in the Europa League. And this is the team we're putting out there to try and win our first ever game in the Europa League. Because no other Europa League games ever happened. I refuse to acknowledge them. Saidi in goal, a back four of Candemil, Sands, Lee and Vandalan. Remember the backup attacking midfielder we signed? Yeah, he's playing at right back. That That's his position. I actually quite like him as a right back. Um... He's, uh, he didn't have the best first Premier League game, um, but he played in the UFA game and looked awesome charging up and down on this right-hand side. So I figure Poznan, that's a game where we can bring him in and see if he can do it against real opposition. We've then got Thompson at the base of the midfield, Kurti and Jimenez ahead of him, Manu in behind Kano and Akemo. A few people have mentioned just how Scottish this team looks. Not Scottish, Spanish. I mean, it, it is getting a bit Scottish. He came from Spain. He is Scottish. Scott, he came from Scotland. He is Spanish. Oh, my God, Kev. Learn to speak. This is your job, for goodness sake. Yes, we have a very Spanish. Spanish slash Scottish team. And then we've got Curti just knocking about the place. He was Albanian and used to play for Chelsea. So he likes to be the exception. Let's play a football match and pretend that I know how to speak because apparently I don't know how to speak anymore. Um, in other news, I know it's a little bit after the event now, because I'm recording these videos a little bit in advance, but remember the Sir Anthony Harris figures that we looked at last week that were for sale on eBay, made by Mark's Corinthians and more on Facebook, if you want to follow him and get yourself a Corinthian figure. Um, but those figures sold for a combined total of, I think, £88 all of which went to the National Autistic Society. So massive thank you to Mark. Massive thank you to whoever bought those figures as well. If you are the people who, or the person who bought the figures, make sure you tweet them at home underscore FC when they arrive so that you can uh, get yourself on a thumbnail holding them because I think that would be awesome. And we haven't had uh, a community thumbnail for a little while because we're still waiting for the next, next batch of shirts to go out. So... Thumbnail with your Anthony Harris figure. Kano's in behind here, and Kano puts us 1-0 up after three minutes. It's his fifth goal of the season. Now, if you recall last season, it took Kano until about February to get to five goals. So, I'm hoping... 
Kano is returning to something like the player that we had the season before, the player who's supposed to be a future leading Premier League striker, the player who has five-star potential, obviously being surrounded by his uh, his youth team strike partner, Akemo, is doing him the world of good. Probably bet- more so than maybe playing with Presedo, who probably stole his limelight a little bit. I thought their goalkeeper was going to take that back over the line there, and that would have been much chucklesome. I've just noticed we've got AEK Athens in this group. Is that who... Um, what's his face? Wearmouth. Is that who he went to play for? Mark Wearmouth, the left back who came up with us, who we sold for a crazy amount of money. I know he went to Greece. If he's, I need to check. I know we're playing a match right now, but if that's where Mark Wearmouth is playing, I'm going to be so. <gasps> Mark Wearmouth! He's not registered for them, though. So we're not actually going to get to play him. But he's played three European games already this year. How is he now not registered? Oh, I was so excited at the prospect of Mark Wearmouth coming home. But alas, it seems he won't. Obviously, when we're away in Greece for the away leg, we'll all go and have tea round his house. Mrs Wearmouth, still a big Kev fan, after I uh, basically revolutionised her life with all the money that I sent her way through turning Mark Wearmouth from a lower league left back into an £8 million superstar with a 20% signing on fee or whatever it was. Mrs. Wearmouth got quite rich and now lives in Greece. She's a, she's a big Kev fan, so she can make us a, a spaghetti bolognese or something for the whole first team squad. We'll go and hang out with her and it will be... Mark will be there too. It won't just be Mrs. Wearmouth, but she makes a good spaghetti bolognese. Show they're ahead in the game. We don't we don't want this to be a big important game when we go to Athens. We want to have already qualified, or at least already be above them. I'm keeping my eye on Sporting Lisbon. I assume Sporting Lisbon are going to be quite good, but Athens are two 0 up against them already. Although Lisbon have just scored twice, almost immediately as I've started talking about it, which settles things down again between those two. That can end like that. We don't need a result in that game. A draw between those those two. Absolutely fine by me. We're only beating Poznan 1 0 at the moment, and this feels like a game we should be winning a lot more comfortably. But I guess for a team playing in Europe for the first time, any away win against any team is something to be celebrated. We don't have to go there and win 8 0. We just need to go there and win. AK Athens have gone ahead again against Sporting Lisbon. They need to calm down. They've obviously had a, a portion of spaghetti bolognese before the match as well. Good save from Saidi and the highlight just kind of fill, fr- fritters away. I was going to say filters away. I don't think that's something that a highlight does. Right, let's let's make some changes. Van der Laan is having a good game at left back, but he's tired and on a yellow card. But there's probably more pressing changes that need to be made. Jimenez in midfield not playing very well at all. So Carl Bishop can come on for him. We can then swap. We can then... Swap those two around, get Curti back playing in the Mazala role that he does so delightfully. Akemo not playing well, so Dragovic can come on for him. And are we going to play them that way round? How good is Kano at being a complete forward? It doesn't look like it makes a lot of difference. And as Kano is the one scoring the goals at the moment, we'll leave we'll leave Dragovic as the complete forward. We've not actually given Dragovic a go as a complete forward. He might be an absolute superstar at it. Manu with a free kick that is kept out quite heroically by their keeper. We've now had three clear-cut chances, eight shots on target. We should be more than a goal ahead in this game, but their keeper is playing an absolute blinder. Thompson now over to Bishop, back to Thompson again. We need to get the ball back into that penalty area, but we're not, and the highlight's just gone again. Still 3-2 to AEK Athens in the other game, and I think we're going to take off Manu, bring on Chernyshov, and just see if he wants to mix things up a little bit with a little bit of creativity. They are now... Oh, Bennett. Um, they just nearly equalised. A, a draw here would be troublesome. I think it makes it quite difficult for us to progress from the group if we don't win both of our games against Poznan. I think we have to win both of these and then win our home games against the other two and then we should be OK. A draw here, though is a problem. Bishop plays it forward, looking for Kano, but doesn't get anywhere near him. Van der Laan! Oh, my word! Good job we've got a £53 million goalkeeper. Goodness me. 
I'm never playing him at right back again. Chernyshov now. Just go and grab a goal so I can calm down a little bit. Kano is there. In a shooting position, Kano scores. Number six for the season. 2-0 on the night. We have won the game now, hopefully. I don't think there's any danger in a Europa League game in declaring myself the winner of a match before it's finished. I don't see how that can go wrong. Um, and Kano now on a hat-trick as well. Their keeper very nearly... Very nearly keeping that one out as well. He has had a very good game. If we were in the market for a goalkeeper, we'd be having a look at Prisbecki in goal for for uh, Poznan here. Bishop now back off the crossbar. Dragovic was lurking, and we are we're starting to finally in the 88th minute properly get hold of this game and look like we are the better team, which is what we always should have been. We qualified through the league in the greatest league in the world, and this is Poznan. Right, Candemil in behind now, can't get the crossover, and it's one last chance for a counter counter attack, and it's just snuffed out by Sands, and then Thompson is there to cover the way Thompson is supposed to. That's what we spent all that money on him for this summer. And then Curti has the ball in midfield, plays it out to Candemil, who doesn't get there, and this feels like a final whistle is about to be blown. Their keeper has even handled a terrible back pass brilliantly as well. Chernyshov, can we grab a third? We cannot. It's a corner that we'll never get to take. And that is a rather successful first venture into European football. Now let's go and see if we can do the same again against Tottenham and start to turn the season around. A few changes for the Tottenham game then to get us back to what I would consider to be currently our first choice team. So Rivière comes back in at right back. Uh, Bishop comes back into the midfield, which means I'm just converting Jimenez to be a uh, box-to-box midfield. I'm still trying to get the best out of Jimenez and I'm thinking we've... Bishop as a proper playmaker just sat in there not doing a lot. I want Jimenez quite mobile. Really, Jimenez and Thompson should both be playing here and I probably shouldn't have signed both of them. You live and learn. Chernyshev also comes back in behind the front too. Let's get into this match. A win here suddenly becomes a lot more necessary than it would have been if we hadn't have started the rest of the season so poorly. Remember, we are still, I would still consider us a team that aren't really any good. We had, we've had performed well over and above expectations for the last couple of years now, but we are still a team where the board is still just expecting a mid-table finish. To that end, maintaining the Kev ratio should still be there or thereabouts, and we're not a million miles away from it. If this had been our first season in the Premier League, we'd be over the moon with five points from our first six games, and if we can pick up a result here against Spurs, then we do actually go ahead of the Kev ratio which, I mean, one or two points ahead of that at this stage, and you are a mid-table team, which is where we're supposed to be. And I think with this being our first season in Europe, a mid-table finish is fine. Ignore that idiot from a day or two ago who was looking for a Champions League finish. That can be next year. This year, we want to win the Europa League and get in the Champions League that way, and then just not get in a relegation battle as a result of it. Got to lower the expectations slightly. Um... Saidi's having a blinding game, by the way. A combination of him and the defenders who were helping him with the last-ditch saves and goal-line clearances. Spurs had seven shots in the first five minutes of this match. That That's a worry when they have the best striker of his generation playing for them. We probably shouldn't let them have as many chances as they are. They get another pretty free header at goal there, and thankfully it goes over. But now they have another free kick from the edge of the area, and this one goes wide. They don't have their shooting boots on today which well they do they got the shooting boots on but fortunately they'd forgotten how to aim T- probably temporarily i don't want to tempt fate by saying spurs can't hit the target mip, mip, mip. that's a guarantee that williamson is going to go out and get six goals in the second half but for that first half the rest of the team have been pretty poor but the back four and sadie have done their job. And here's Chernyshov trying to show me that he's about to do his job as well. Releases Kano on the left-hand side. A Kamo is available in the middle. We can't get the crossover though. Candemil though intercepts but can't quite keep hold of the ball that he intercepted himself. That would have been superb if he'd have managed to keep hold of that. He is starting to show some flashes of brilliance down that left-hand side. I'm getting Ryback vibes from Candemil. But there is Williamson just on the stroke of half-time. Although we're going over to the little telly. Come on, referee. Do us a solid. Look at this guy. Disallow it just because of that moron who stood on the edge of his technical area looking right at me, jumping up and down and waving his arms around. I don't care if the goal's given now. Just send that guy off because that is completely unprofessional 
unacceptable behaviour. I won't stand for it. Which one of these tools was it? Dean Morris isn't even playing. He's not even on the bench for Tottenham. I thought for a second there I was going to see Dean Morris on the bench and it was going to be him. I don't want to have to punch Dean Morris in the mouth, but I will if he does stuff like that to us. Right, we'll just carry on down the route of being underdogs. I mean, we have been absolutely battered in that first half. I'm surprised it's taken as long as it did for them to make the breakthrough. They've got him up front and he's always going to score goals. But we do still need... We need to... We need a point. We need we need some points. Four points from the first six games. Absolutely not okay. And it is going to start to put some pressure on. We're, un, we're subject to another board takeover again. It's been like the third one in the last year. So there is potentially going to be a new board of directors coming in. I don't want a new board of directors to come in as we're hovering just outside the relegation zone because all of a sudden, all of the good work I've put in over the last 16 seasons is thrown out the window. They judge me from the day they arrive and from the day they arrive, we'll have been rubbish. But Akemo, he doesn't want me getting fired. He grabs his third goal of the season, assist from Kano. And look, I mean, it's another lovely ball forward from Candomil. Kano does brilliantly here. Just plays it over to his buddy. One touch, bang, one all. That's, I mean, that's close to an immediate reply. I know it's the other side of half time, but there's only actually three minutes of game time between those two goals. And that's a, that's a big one. That's important. And hopefully knocks the stuffing out of Spurs a little bit, who tried so hard for so long to get the breakthrough, only for us to answer back immediately. And Thompson's in. That's surely going to be disallowed. Is that... Has that actually been given? I thought there must have been an offside or a foul on the keeper or something in there. Not even a VAR. Um, I, we need to see this from the other angle to see what's actually happened. The keeper's had an absolute howler and Thompson's tucked it away. Works for me. And a win here would be sensational because we absolutely didn't deserve to get anything out of this game based on that first half. Um, yes, let's do that to Kevin Williamson. I don't normally take any notice of those instructions mid-game but when they're talking about the best striker in the game I will pay attention right Liam Dobson is apparently the guy who should come on here I disagree I'm going to bring on Curti and once again we're struggling to get a performance out of Jimenez who I think we might just have to drop him down to the bench and make him Thompson's backup which would be a shame because he's a cracking player but he's a cracking player there just like Thompson is we should have just settled for the one who cost us £10 million rather than then also going out and spending £40 million. Although, to be fair, Thompson's even better. So, we've got two very good defensive midfielders now. We just, it's, we've gone back in time 16 years. It's Dean Morris and Shane Phillips all over again. I've got two excellent defensive midfielders and I've got to stop trying to force them into the same team. Right, it's now, I think Bishop is next in line to come off. So, Dobson does actually get on the pitch after all. And we are going to make him a box-to-box -box midfielder and actually switch Curti to be the playmaker. So it's pretty much the change that the assistant manager wanted anyway. But I had to do it my way. We're keeping an eye on Kano. Dragovic is hovering around ready to come on if need be. Tottenham have just brought on an elite winger because they can 75 minutes into a match. We finished above them last year. And now a big ball over the top looking for Williamson again who just dances around our defence like they're not there but thankfully hits the post my word he's a good player who thankfully we seem to have caught on a day when he's still not recaptured his form of old yet Dragovic coming on for Kano with 10 minutes to go as we look to cling on to this game Tottenham are fired up and we need to we need to just hold on. Hopefully they're going to commit men forward and we can hit them on the counter-attack. Lee and Sands are so far forward, though, as a defensive partnership. I don't know why they're playing inside the Tottenham half with five minutes to go. Dobson tries to play it across to Riviere, who was on the overlap. It doesn't quite get there, but Thompson is going to try and get it back out to him and does. Riviere back to Lee. Lee and Sands again on the halfway line. Do they usually hang out there? Or have Tottenham drawn them back somehow? I don't remember them ever playing that far forward. Forward, and we've just knocked it around their midfielders really intricately and nicely. And if we score a goal here, it'll be one of the finest goals in the history of the series. What a goal! Forget the cross and the finish. I want to see this build up from here because this was stunning 
from the four or five players involved in just moving the ball around Tottenham as they're trying to press, just moving it around and waiting for an opportunity. And then as soon as we get the opportunity, releasing Candomil down that left-hand side, a Camo tucks it away. That was brilliant. They deserve some praise for that. And it doesn't even matter if they score here because we should be able to hold on from this point. And all of a sudden, with, a, with the result against Chelsea and now this performance against Tottenham, oh, and that puts... Uh, dampener on the whole thing because candomil has been absolutely superb let's just put him back there for the last 20 seconds or so but we've turned the season around in two games good job our poor form happened so early in the year um that looks like it was a bad injury as well because that's three minutes of time added on for whatever's happened to candomil there um we've definitely done a number on spurs but if it's been at the cost of candomil breaking his leg then I'll happily take the defeat and swap it back around again. Um, Candomel, uh, five to six weeks isn't too bad. I thought it was going to be much worse than that. I was thinking cruciate ligaments or broken leg or something like that. I can live with five or six weeks without. And we've got other options at left back, just not as good as he is. Right, tomorrow's episode, I think, because it's our first season in the Europa League, we want to show the interesting... I think we'll just do all the away games so we'll be back tomorrow for Sporting Lisbon and then the next day, Mrs. Wim of Spaghetti Bolognese. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.